Hi, welcome back. What I want to talk about now is the cortex. And cortex is, uh, comes from Latin words that means brain bark. And that's important to know because the cortex is the outer layer of your brain, just like the bark is the outer layer of a tree. And most of the cell bodies of neurons live in that brain bark or cerebral cortex. Cerebral cortex is where cognition happens, so we'll be talking about it a lot this semester. The more cerebral cortex you have, and the more complex your cerebral cortex, the more computing power you have, the smarter you are, the more cognition that you have. So it's important for us to have as much cortex as possible. Our brain, the surface of our brain, has lots of peaks and valleys in it. It's very wrinkly. And those wrinkles are um, a means of increasing the amount of cortex that we have. If we didn't have those wrinkles, if our brain was a sphere like a ball, then that sphere would be, our brain would have to be three and a half times larger than it is now. And any mother can tell you that there is no way any of us would be alive today if our mothers had to give birth to us with heads that are three and a half times or three times larger than the heads we have now. Um, so little fact, thank your mother on Mother's Day. Um, okay, those wrinkles and valleys um, give neuroanatomists a way of creating maps of the cortex. They're, they're landmarks, if you will. Um, the, the ridges, the outcroppings, are called gyri, or a gyrus individually, and the valleys are called individually a sulcus, or together, sulci. Um, there are some interesting dividing lines um, front and back and left and right. So between the front and the back of the brain, so right about here, is something called the central sulcus, and you'll see later that that's going to divide a couple of lobes. And then it turns out the two halves of your brain are separated by something called the uh, uh, longitudinal fissure. And um, you're going to see that your brain is actually like a walnut. It has two parts to it, which produces some very interesting things. Those, those two parts of your brain are kind of like having two different brains. But each brain sees a different part of the world and processes a different part of the world. And the concept behind that is contralaterality. Um, and the Egyptians figured this out um, thousands and thousands of years ago. What they figured out is that the left side of your body is controlled by the right half of your brain. And the right half of your body is controlled by the left half of your brain. So if somebody has damage, say, to the right side of their brain, they might have trouble moving some part of the left side of their body. That's contralaterality. So it works with movement. It also works with touch. If somebody touches your left hand, it's going to stimulate a part of your brain called the somatosensory system on the right half of your brain. And it also works with the visual system. You see the left half of the world with the right side of your brain and the right side of your world with the left half of your brain. Okay, I mentioned something about lobes. Neuroanatomists divide the brain into lots of different segments, um, but the four biggies are the four lobes. Frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital lobes. Um, if you look at the order in which those occur, um, it's frontal, temporal, parietal, occipital. And to help you remember that, there's a mnemonic device uh, that has those same uh, uh, letters in it. Um, if you've taken a class on Freud, then you will understand the humor behind the statement, Freud tore his pants off. Freud is frontal, tore is temporal, pants is parietal, and O for off is occipital. So I'm going to talk just really briefly about each of those lobes. So let's start in the front, the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is super important. It's more developed in humans than in any other animal, and it plays uh, very important roles in complex cognition. So um, long-term decision-making, 
uh, executive function, um, sol problem solving, making decisions. Um, it's a very large area, the frontal lobes, and it includes Broca's area that we talked about in the last uh, lecture. And Broca's area, remember, is involved in the production of language. Um, it also involves the very front of the frontal lobe. It's called the prefrontal cortex. Um, and the prefrontal cortex you may have heard of um, when someone uh, mentioned a really barbaric surgery that doesn't happen so much anymore called a prefrontal lobotomy. Uh, it's, there's a big sociology uh, associated with the prefrontal lobotomy, but uh, essentially what people would do in the surgery, it was a very simple surgery, so it was um, given um, a shockingly large number of times, but you could do the surgery by taking an implement that looks to me a lot like an ice pick and um, moving the ice pick behind the person's eye and up into their brain and wiggling it around so that the front part of the frontal cortex was cut off from the rest of the brain. And what did that do? Well, prefrontal lobotomies um, took away people's initiative. So if you um, we're dealing with somebody who was acting out um, back in the 50s um, and even later, um, a prefrontal lobotomy might have been prescribed to calm them down. You can learn more about prefrontal lobotomies in our Canvas webpage. Okay, so frontal lobe, back there is the parietal lobe. If you wore a little cap, you'd wear it over your parietal lobe. Your parietal lobes are involved in all sorts of things, but they play a very big role in attention and perception and figuring out where things are in the world, where you are in the world and where everything else is. Um, there's this funny thing that happens if someone has a stroke in their parietal lobe, um, and it's a phenomenon known as Hemi neglect. And hemi neglect means you ignore half the world. So if I had a stroke in my right parietal cortex, I might ignore the left half of the room or the left half of anything I see. Um, and there's some drawings on the slide you're seeing now. On the left hand side are a coherent picture of a clock, a house, and a flower. Um, People who are suspected of having hemi-neglect might be given those drawings and asked simply to reproduce them. And what happens uh, with someone with hemi-neglect when they try to draw or reproduce a drawing like that is you'll notice that they're missing half the pictures. So only half the numbers on the clock are drawn. Only half of the house is drawn. So hemi-neglect. Uh, the temporal lobes are by your ears, they're on the side, and well, they're by your ears, so not surprisingly, they process auditory information. They're also involved in um, high-level visual processes such as object recognition, and they also include Wernicke's area, which we talked about in the last uh, lecture too, um, which is involved in language comprehension. All the way in the far back of the brain, is uh, an area called the occipital lobe. It's kind of funny, it's on the opposite side of your head from your eyes, but the occipital lobe processes visual information. Now I mentioned you have these two halves to the brain, sort of like a walnut. They're connected like a walnut is through something called the corpus callosum. And the corpus callosum is a big bundle of fire fibers that connect the two halves of the brain. Um, I can tell you about the thalamus. Actually, I'm just going to stop there before I babble on too long and come back and we'll talk about our last lecture, different types of brain disease.